everyone, welcome. You're watching Ask BQ on Bloomberg Quint. I am Alex Matthew. If you've got questions on equity, this is a perfect show for you. You can send those queries to us on Twitter, Facebook and WhatsApp. You can also call us on 0224540-4141 or you can mail us on askbq at bloombergquint.com. Only make sure to add the Ask BQ hashtag. Well, uh, it seems like there's uh, a reasonable amount of uh, strength uh, at least in the broader markets, the benchmarks are trading with gains of less than of about two uh, tenths of a percent. The Nifty Bank with cuts of about three tenths of a percent as of now. Uh, we'll have Agam tell you a little more about what the fine print of all of that is. But uh, before we do, let's get our two experts in from, for the day. We've got uh, Sharmila Zoshi, who's an independent investment advisor, and Vikas Jain of Reliance Securities. They're both here to answer all of your questions today. Agam, uh, what's the fine print? How are we looking at the end of the week? Well, you know, as you've suggested, Alex, we are looking at the subdued queues today, but overall, it's turning out to be a good week, uh, considering the gains that we've seen in the previous, uh, well, one or two odd sessions. So uh, we've actually seen the Nifty give up some of its gains on an intraday basis with the Sensex also, well, largely flattish at this point in time. To take a look at the banking index, that's the reason why we are seeing some weakness because that one is trending lower by as much as a little over quarter percent. Reasons possibly because of an end of this trading week and I reckon some traders out there will look to uh, book some profits. And uh, well, that said, in terms of your broader market indices, they're doing well because we certainly are seeing some advances in the mid cap as well as the small cap indices. In terms of the nifty gainers, ad advances for Vedanta and JSW Steel pushing the indices higher along with something like a Tata Motors, a very surprise up move coming through there. And on, in terms of the losers on uh, the Nifty 50, and that should come up on your screen, we have some weakness in banks like Indusind Bank. Gale and Bharti Infratel, among others, which are losing out in trade. So mixed cues certainly playing out at this point in time. But um, we're going to have to wait and watch for more cues of whether or not we can expect a little more strength going into trade next week. All right. Um, on that note, I think we can jump straight to the questions that we have. Um, uh, to some of you who are viewing, we're not live at the moment on YouTube, uh, but we are live on the other platforms. You can send your queries there, and we will be back very shortly on YouTube, and we will notify you when we are. Uh, let me take the first query. This one is from... Um, on SP, SPI, I know, Hitesh Gandhi. Let's pull up State Bank of India and in fact look at uh, the last three months or so. We can take from the start of the year uh, 2019 just to see how the stock has done. Uh, just about flat in trade as of now, but you can see that it's gained about 8% and from mid-February around, there's been a sharp rally in the stock. So let's uh, get a check on the fundamentals and on the technicals of this one. Uh, Sharmila, we've got Hitesh who's asking what the reason behind the recent rally in SPI is. Uh, is there more uh, confidence really going forward uh, that uh, the bank can really um, move past some of the issues with regard to asset quality uh, and uh, some of those concerns with regard to jet also uh, probably being thrown into the mix. So how are you reading all of that? So I think, you know, while on the one hand, uh, there was some sort of positive news uh, with that, you know, whole SR uh, thing going through and uh, there could be, there is a possibility uh, that they could receive some money uh, from the resolution of that. On the other hand, you have the whole uh, jet issue playing out where, uh, in effect, they've now become the largest shareholder in a uh, airline. But I think market is sort of also viewing that positively because in a way it is a step forward. And now they can actually build, bring in an investor and uh, sort of uh, uh, get out of at least uh, the money that they have invested uh, in Jet Airways or see uh, some of that debt get converted into equity, etc. So uh, I think it's really, uh, you know, this kind of news flow that has uh, really uh, been very positive, not just for SBI, but for a whole host of PSUs. Because I think ever since NCLAT has started, uh, this could probably be, you know, like the first major thing that gets solved if this whole uh, Arcelor SR thing uh, goes through and the money comes in. And I think uh, you will slowly start seeing a uh, lot of resolutions coming in and that will be positive for the space. Uh, so, yes, I think uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag for me really right now, uh, given the fact that they're now the largest shareholder in Jet Airways, which is uh, not a very happy situation. Uh, but I think uh, one can stay hopeful that you will see some resolution in that area as well. All right. All right. So on the fundamentals, uh, reasonably 
uh, positive is uh, the view coming in from Sharmila. Vikas, uh, what's the view on the charts? We've seen a significant run-up since the mid of February. Uh, for somebody who's looking to place a bet on uh, the short term uh, with regard to SBI, what are the levels that you would advise them to watch out for? Well, if you look at the structure, since the middle of the February, the stock has seen a sustained amount of up move from the lows of 265 to 270. Yesterday, it made a swing trade high of near to those 335, 338 odd levels. But we believe some bout of profit booking cannot be rolled out from current levels, and the stock can slide near to those 303, 305. So 303, 305 is a good support area. So because if you look at the whole move setup, at least the first retracement level comes near to those 303, 305 levels. So we expect the stock to slide and see some amount of profit within from current levels. Okay, well, uh, well, let's move on from SBI on to, well, uh, two stocks from two different sectors. We have a question from Akshay and he wants to know if it is the right time to buy Dabar. And the second stock he wants to know is City Union Bank. That's what he wants to know about for the long term. So, Sharmila, I'm going to come back to you on this one. How have you placed on Dabar and City Union Bank? Oh, well, yes, I think uh, uh, Dabar is, has been a stock that I like, but I think of late one has heard uh, sort of concerns coming in for this entire space. And I think even the management of Dabar has sort of voiced concerns in terms of, you know, the kind of pickup that they would uh, be seeing, uh, especially in uh, rural markets. Uh, so I think it's time to be a little cautious on the entire space. And uh, I think even if you buy try and do a sort of an uh, SIP sort of an approach into the stock and try and buy it on dips, because in the longer term, definitely this is a stock that I like because, you know, a lot of positives coming in for them. Uh, and I think going ahead, uh, once you see that pickup coming in, uh, in, in consumption as a basket, uh, definitely Dabur will be a beneficiary. So try and buy it on dips. Uh, with City Union Bank, perhaps I think uh, while it's uh, a very decent, uh, I mean, it's a decent price to get into the stock, uh, it might be a good idea also to look at some of the other corporate banks because, you know, uh, uh, what I sense also is and what market has been really uh, exhibiting in these last couple of days, last month or so, is the fact that uh, some of these corporate banks are now placed to really uh, take things ahead and move uh, things ahead. You know, they've come out of all the issues of the past. And they're really ready to take it to the next level. So I think a bank like an ICICI bank or a Yes Bank in terms of returns may make more sense. But you know, if if their if the investment horizon is is uh, fairly large, I mean fairly long, then I think uh, you could also look at City Union Bank. Okay, all right. Uh, that's a view on the banking space. There, uh, let's uh, get a live query in from Facebook. We've got um, we've got a question from Satya Subhash on Action Construction. Uh, he says that he has bought Action Construction at 98 rupees and he has a, a holding period that he anticipates will be about six months or so. He's in the green as of now. The stock is trading uh, higher today, as much as 7.7% higher today at 117.65. What are the levels, Vikas, that he should look at uh, for the next six months? Well, the stock has seen a good amount of volume, price volume breakout in the last few days. And we believe this is a sustained amount of up move. The stock has convincingly crossed its 200 day average near to 212, 113 levels. So, unless until the stock would continue to see strong amount of action from current year, and on the higher side, we should easily achieve the target of 129 to 135 for. So, he should continue to keep his holdings and put profit near to 129 to 135 range. And on a trailing basis, if he wants to keep, he can keep a stock of around 110, that is 2% away from the 200 day average. Okay, well, uh, let's move on and take uh, another FMCG company. We have Abhinash who wants uh, a fundamental view on Marico. That's the question. Uh, is, that's what that's what was we needed. Uh, well, uh, Sharmila, come in on Marico as well. May as well. Uh, how do you see this one in comparison to some of the other FMCG companies? Oh, well, I think uh, in a sense they are all in the same basket because you know the uh, these are uh, sort of uh, items that you would pick off a shelf uh, uh, which are not very high value but they are largely dependent on volumes driving the revenue for them. So I think as I said, you know, so similarly for Dabur, uh, it's probably time to play it a little safe and try and buy the stock on declines. Between the two, I prefer a Dabur because you know of the product portfolio etc. that they have. Uh, so, uh, I think if the investor hasn't bought, it might be a better idea, first of all, to wait. And if you have to invest, as I said, you know, uh, try to do a staggered buying in, in, in a double. Okay, um, you know, this is an interesting uh, 
counter because uh, if you can pull up uh, the last couple of days, uh, uh, the chart for Bajaj Holdings, uh, that will perhaps give you an idea of why uh, this counter saw a sh sharp spike in yesterday's session and you can see that uh, towards the right end of the screen. Uh, over the last month, of course, it's about 6.5% six, six higher. Um, Mayank Saraf has been uh, a regular view on this program and he has been tracking Bajaj Holdings for some time. Yesterday, the stock went as high as 15% higher. Uh, he's wondering if something's brewing, Sharmila. Uh, are you familiar with anything uh, regarding Bajaj Holdings and uh, are you really sanguine about holding on to this counter for the long term? Well, you know, I think uh, there is nothing specific that I've heard for Bajaj Holdings, but I think that uh, the only re th reasons I can sort of extrapolate is the fact that, you know, now that Britannia is becoming part of uh, the Nifty, uh, you know, there is a general uh, sort of a positive view that's come about on a lot of the holding companies. So, for instance, uh, uh, the holding company of uh, Britannia saw a lot of buying. So, I think, you know, there has been a general spike and general awakening that if uh, the... You know, the parent company, I mean, you know, the subsidiaries are doing well, the parent company should also see an increase in value. But I haven't really heard anything specific about Bajaj Holdings. All right. Uh, well, uh, we move on and talk about a few more queries. And we actually want to address, uh, uh, you know, something like, and, uh, okay, uh, well, this is a pretty simple and straightforward question from Pankaj. Uh, please suggest a stock for the short term and the long term. So I'm going to take one from each. Uh, Vikas, let me come on the short term for you. Uh, what are you suggesting to your clients at this point in time? Well, if you look at the FMCG sector, is seeing some amount of uptake in today's trade also, and the sector has been pretty burned. And we believe post the work coming in from the banking and energy space, FMCG sector will lead the markets to further up more. So we are quite positive on the FMCG space from current levels. We believe the stock one good food like at is Hindustan Lever. The stock has been trending between the 1680 to 1710 odd levels, and we are quite positive. We believe in a short term basis, the stock can give up swing of near to around 1780 odd levels. So 7080 rupees uptake can easily be expected from current year, and it can keep a stop of around near to <coughs> 1645 to 1650 levels. All right, fair enough. Uh, in terms of yes, yes, please go on. Yeah, it, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, in terms of the overall structure, in the longer term basis, if you look at from the metal space, JSW steel has seen a consistent decline and with supports of near to those 265 to 80 odd levels, the stock has been crossing its 50 day average. So we believe the stock has had been poised for a strong move from current levels and would see a sharp up move. So JSW steel also can be looked at near to those 335 to 340 odd levels. Hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. So, so, so Sharmi, let me come to you. Uh, what is your favorite idea these days in terms of long-term investments? Well, actually, I'm playing it a little safe, and I think that you know, given the kind of environment that one has uh, on the entire consumption auto space, you know, the kind of uh, voices you're hearing, as well as the numbers that we are seeing, uh, I think it's best to stay away from that for a bit. And I think uh, perhaps for me, the safest sector at, at this point in time is IT, in spite of the fact that uh, we are seeing uh, rupee getting stronger. Uh, so I would really uh, go with the large cap IT and my two recommendations there would be HCL Tech or Tech Mahindra. You can take your pick. I like both the stocks. I like the numbers that they have given this last quarter as well as their order wins and their, uh, you know, their outlook going ahead. So I think either of these uh, two stocks would be my long-term bets. All right, Pankaj, you mentioned that you're a new investor. So um, heads up for you, while these are recommendations for stocks that you should uh, consider either trading or investing in, you should do your own research and you should monitor your holdings on a regular basis. That's always a good idea and a good place to start. All right, Freddy Bivera has got a question for us. He's got three stocks for you, Sharmila. Uh, he's holding Yes Bank, uh, 760 shares bought at 220. He's holding, uh, uh, in which he's made uh, quite a sizable profit, Tata Steel. He's holding approximately 300 shares that he bought at 616. He's lost a little ground here. And in Ashok Leyland, uh, he bought at levels of 126, where he's also losing ground. Um, just a, uh, he, he's, uh, and also the timeline that he's looking at is the next uh, one to two years. Um, so uh, what should he really do with regard to his holdings? One, he's making a sizable profit, uh, and the other two, he's losing ground. Yeah. 
Uh, so I think yes, ma'am. First, uh, I sort of alluded to this space earlier when I said, you know, uh, there have been some corporate banks which have come uh, over overcome some of the concerns that they had, and uh, yes, bank is precisely one of those where we had that management change and uh, sort of uh, confidence getting repos that uh, things could look better for them, uh, even uh, with the with you know with SEBI and uh, things falling in place, etc. So I think this is definitely one stock uh, that you could continue to hold because, uh, especially if you have a two-year horizon, because I think now things will start falling in place. And uh, honestly, the numbers have been fairly, fairly good, so there's really been no concern on that so far. Uh, Tata Steel would be the stock, in fact, that out of all the three, which I would be most worried about, and that is precise. I mean, that is really because of the concerns between US and China and the standoff there, as well as Tata Steel having this little uh, sort of international exposure. Uh, so you know that could all be a bit of a problem you know if, if this whole uh, this brexit concern is something that keeps revisiting the stock uh, and commodity plays uh, honestly i mean you know the, when they start turning it's very difficult to really uh, sort of know the exact time when things begin to look positive for them so i think once again there if you have a two year uh, horizon you could you could continue to hold uh, ashok leland uh, so far what we've really seen is that in terms of cvs the slowdown has not been as pronounced as it's been in the other uh, other four wheeler uh, passenger vehicles or two wheeler space uh, and i think you know ashok leland again has a fairly uh, you know the way they cleaned up their balance sheet and the various things various measures that they've taken uh, the kind of products that they're trying to introduce etc uh, with a two year horizon i'd be uh, quite comfortable in the stock i think you could look at targets of closer to uh, from the current levels of about 100 to about 125 130 Uh, so for me, actually, all three stocks are a uh, hold, but you know, the my order of preference would be yes, Bank Ashok Leyland and third Tata Steel. Okay, so I just want to, uh, you know, while you're uh, on the topic of uh, steel, you're talking about Tata Steel, you're talking about metals globally, U.S., China, all of that. Uh, in the context of all of that, uh, what would you have to say with regard to the graphite uh, companies? You have HEG and graphite, which were the talk of the town a little while back. Uh, how would you rate them as of now uh, as an investment for the long term? Well, you know, this is a discovered story. The problem with both HEG and graphite is that about two years back, it was an undiscovered story, and people made really, really big killing and lot, really multi-bagger sort of returns. So I think those are definitely not on the table anymore. But as a story, I think you know uh, there is enough room for a, you know the next year and a half, two years, and things could happen. And I think the numbers of both have exhibited that uh, you know that way they are on a good uh, trajectory in terms of you know very solid earnings. So I think while the earnings remain strong, you could stay invested. But I think definitely you are not going to see the kind of returns that you saw in the last two years in both the stocks because now it is really a discover story, and uh, it's quite uh, you know nicely owned, and a lot of people have this stock, uh, both these stocks. So I think uh, you know that I think the upside is sort of you are not going to get that kind of an upside. But in terms of numbers and fundamentals, they're fairly decent. Okay, the early birds, of course. Uh, so somebody who invested two years back would have got nine hundred percent. In HEG, but it's come off significantly. Both stocks off uh, about 40% in the last three yeah, months. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is of course when the cycle turns. Uh, yes. You know, so do the stocks. Uh, and well, uh, uh, well, for the sake of uh, those who were long, uh, uh, we really hope that they have come off. But we move on to a question from Piyush, and he wants to know about Greaves Cotton. He wants a technical view on Greaves Cotton. Which is at a hundred and forty rupees per share currently. That's where it's trading, and what it's done is that it has certainly gained in the month of March, and this is after consolidating through the course of January and February. So we have seen that eleven percent gain in the month of March. Vikas, uh, uh, would you go ahead and buy into Greaves Cotton on a technical basis? No, we would completely avoid. Because if you look at the up move, has not been pretty strong with strong volumes. The stock has seen a strong up move, and again, the profit booking has also been equally sharp from the highs of around 150, 155 levels. So one should wait for some amount of move correction here to 127, 129, which is a 200-day average. And over there, one should take an attempt. So one can expect some amount of correction from current levels in the range of around to test a 200-day average. Uh, well, on that note, it's time to slip into our rapid-fire segment. Remember, this is where we try and slip as many questions as possible into a span of two minutes. A quick shout to both our experts to try and keep their answers as cogent yet as short as possible. Uh, let's start by Vivek Sagal's question: India Bulls Housing. It's just that I think he wants a recommendation as to whether he should buy at the current level. Sharmila. 
Uh, I would say no. Okay. Okay, that's an avoid. Uh, but uh, moving on to the next question, and this one is on Imami. Uh, Sharmila, coming back to you. Again, we have a lot of FMCG questions today. Satish wants to know uh, your yeah. view on Imami. Thank you. Well, you know, this used to be a stock that I like, but I think, you know, given the fact that their numbers haven't been strong and this, uh, you know, whole uh, space is also looking a little uh, uh, unsure, I think this could be avoided. All right, uh, Vikas, question for you. Infibeam, uh, Abrar Ali wants to know whether he should get into this counter for the next two to three months. He should completely avoid because if you look at this stock, has seen a vertical fall over the past few months. No doubt there would be some amount of pullbacks from the lower levels of 3132, but then the pullback has also been put through near to trading at 4142. So one should completely avoid. Okay, uh, okay, Shamila, an easy one for you. Uh, Alok Industries, Sharif has invested 10,000 shares in it at a price of three. Alok Industries is currently trading at 4.75. What is your recommendation? Well, you know, I honestly don't comment on stocks below uh, 10 rupees, but I think there is some NCRT resolution for a low industry. So if you want to stay invested because of that, it's up to you. But, you know, as a rule, I don't really comment on stocks below 10 rupees. Be very wary of companies that are under uh, IBC. We discussed this on yesterday's program. In case you want to have a look at that, you should. Uh, a very quick one, uh, Sharmila. Escorts, uh, uh, would you buy uh, at this point uh, and hold for the long term? Uh, no, I wouldn't buy at this point in time. I would wait. Okay, and just time for one more query. It's on Andhra Bank. And we have Videh who wants a technical view here. So, uh, Vikas, if you can come in on Andhra Bank. It currently trades at 28 rupees per share, not looking very liquid. How would you trade this one? Well, there are a lot more other PSU banks to trade. So, it's better to avoid Andhra Bank and invest into some other PSU banking space. All right, that was quite a comprehensive half hour. Uh, thank you so much to both our guests. Thanks, Sharmila and Vikas, for helping thank all our much. viewers uh, with the queries that you answered today. Uh, on that note, that's all well, we have. For yes, you. absolutely. It's a wrap on this edition. But remember, we're just a Twitter post up call away, so keep your queries coming in. And we promise to address as many as possible through the course of the show. And that's a wrap on this edition of Ask PQ. Up next is Power Lunch.